There's your view of St. Leonard Lake where I'm at. So in this video, I'm going to be starting to frame up the house. So I'll be putting the floor deck in and framing up the stud walls. So I hope you enjoy this video. Okay, so today, today's Monday, June the, uh, what is it, the 19th? The 20, 21st, first day of summer. And apparently it's Aboriginal day up here in Northern Ontario. I guess everywhere, I don't know. So today, we, uh, the building inspector came and passed our foundation. So he says now we can backfill. So we're starting to frame up the bearing wall inside the basement. And the trusses showed up. So a fellow here, a very friendly uh, fellow here from the Sioux brought the trusses. And we're going to watch him unload that and then get back to work. It's Monday, June the 20, it's 28th, and I uh, thought I'd just bring you up to date on some of the latest things here. So here's our uh, foundation wall waterproofing system. So we, we have some of the plaster here sticking above, and then we have our membrane, the Delta membrane, dimple wrap, whatever you want to call it. It's... Uh, and the, the finished trim piece, which is supposed to stop dirt from uh, getting down in there afterwards. It goes all the way down and it actually extends uh, over the footing. So it comes down to the footing, there's a bit of a cove of plaster and it extends out past right onto where the weeping tile would be. And then we completely covered that with gravel. So we covered it with pea stone, which the aggregate company told me to use. But then the building inspector said, no, 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 you're supposed to use three quarter inch clear gravel. So, but he said, don't worry about it. We're not gonna make you change it. So that's nice that uh, they did that. So the foundation is done. We've been backfilling with my little Ford 1710. It's kind of, uh, Long process. I've just been working on that for an hour or so at the end of each day, gradually getting there. So, and now we've been working on the floor. So, here we can see how I've been uh, fastening the plate. First, we have our, our gasket, our seal gasket, and then uh, the plate uh, with my anchor bolts. So, I had to measure them and and then bring the plate right to the inside of the, the block wall, flush with it. That's how we do that. And then uh, once I get the sill plate all on, then I put rim joist, so that's a rim joist right there. Put that all the way along on top of the plate, toenail it on, and then, and then I nail the uh, 2x10 floor joist to that. Let's take a closer look at some of the details. So here's Junior running the chop saw. She's cutting uh, bracing for the floor joist.
She is wearing earplugs, but she's not wearing safety glasses, so I don't know what to say about that. I'm in the basement. I've been doing a bit of framing, so I'll show you some of the details from down here. So there's the beam. That was a bit tricky. This side, we put the post and strapped it against that stud wall, that I, the bearing wall that I already had, so that wasn't bad. I have to uh, put some anchors on that bottom piece yet. And I gotta drill that, put a few screws through to hold that top plate onto the bottom of the beam. And uh, I've got that top plate of lumber there, the 2 by 6 it's screwed to that beam in a few spots. And then I just lay my 2 by 6 or 2 by 10 floor joists on top of that. This one here is sort of floating in the middle of nowhere, so we got it cross braced. And it's sitting, you know, on the pad. And I tap conned a piece of lumber there te temporarily to just so we can brace up that post and get it there nice and plumb and hold up the beam. So now that the floor joists are on there, uh, it's really solid. I can take those braces off. It's not going anywhere. So here I've got, with my stairwell, so I doubled up this, uh, this uh, floor joist here, doubled up that floor joist and then ended my uh, floor joists against that rim, I should say. So uh, I doubled them up and then I'm going to put uh, joist hangers on the outside here to uh, on each one of these floor joists that butt up against that header. We'll call that a header. So over here I'll show you how that works. Wherever I have a window opening or door opening, double up the, uh, the rim joist there and then uh, then I use a joist hanger to uh, attach the joist to the header because I can't really end nail it. And uh, basically not much holding up the bottom of this joist anyway, it's kind of hanging in midair, so that's why we use the joist hangers. So they come in all different sizes. I need to get some more though to finish off some of my openings and headers and stuff like that. Okay, it's going. So I'm going to uh, put one of the boards on. So what we do is, the board laying here upside down, these are tongue and groove uh, flooring fiber. So it's upside down so that when I flip it over, it'll be the correct side up. So the tongue is uh, already, it's already installed. So I have to it up. And I just hold it in place with my foot while I drop it. Make sure I bump it tight against on the butt joint. So 
so it's in. So try to line it up so that this joint is, is lined up good so that the next sheet that goes on will uh, will fit on nice and flush. So I've got a nice tight joint here on the uh, plywood. Normally um, it takes two of us. Junior will stand on the board to line it up, the plywood sheet to line it up so it goes in the groove easier, but she was doing the filming this time. So, so now I have to nail this uh, plywood down. I'll show you a trick for doing that in just a minute. So I start at the edge of the plywood and I mark my 16 inch centers because these floor joists are kind of, you know, uh, they're, they're twisted and warped a bit. And so I want to nail them on 16. So I have to mark that out. I'm doing that right now, 16 inch centers. Some of them are good, some of them obviously not so good. So uh, take a look at the top. Huh? So take a look at this one here, I'll show you. See I've got my 16 inch center there, but obviously this floor joist seems to be moved over a bit so that it lines up. Same with that one. Same with that one. This one looks pretty good. So I just have to move them over with the hammer as I'm mailing them to make sure they're on the 16s. So let's do that right now. So I'm going to be adjusting these floor joists to be on 16 inch center as I'm nailing them. So let me just see how uh, obstinate this thing can be. So I'll just move that over. down and go on to my next sheet. So that's how we are nailing our sheeting down. So now as we progress, we have a 14 foot span here, 13 foot 8, so we have to put cross bracing in. So we're going to do that uh, pretty soon. We might one more roll of plywood and then we'll put the cross bracing depending on how the measurement is. So then uh, so we'll just keep, keep putting some plywood down and then we'll show you how we're doing that cross bracing. Now I'm nailing on some cross braces because uh, I'm in a spot where the span here is close to 14 feet. And so with 2x10s you have to, at least in Ontario, you have to brace them at the halfway point. So I'm doing that. So what I've done is I've got a chalk line that uh, I snapped that goes right down the center of the span where I want to put these braces. So I'm nailing the braces just on the top for now all the way up along and once I have the plywood floor in then I'll go down below and nail the bottoms because uh, I don't want to nail the bottom and top now because I have to keep adjusting these uh, floor joists to, to go on 16 inch centers because as I mentioned before they're, they're a little wonky at spots they're twisted and warped and so on or just bent so that's what I'm doing so here I'll uh, show you how I, I nail these on so,
that's how it goes. I'll just keep uh, nailing these along, and once they're all done, then I'll continue sheathing the floor. Okay. You can stop. We've got the, f the decking all on the floor joists, so I've just been nailing up the bottom part of these cross braces. And, uh, whoa, I almost fell. Okay, now I'll show you how I do that, a little video here. So I'm just uh, using a little step stool and uh, just pushing the bottom of the brace up tight against the floor joist and nailing it in. I'm using a two inch, two and a half inch nail. So today is um, Monday, Thursday, no, Monday, July, I think it's July 5th or 6th. So we've got all the national holidays behind us, we can get down to work now. And uh, I finished the flooring, and uh, on uh, just on Friday of last week, so that's pretty cool. One of the things I forgot to mention on that flooring video was that I glued down all of the, these uh, sheets of plywood, used the, uh, the large tubes of, of uh, the glue that they pr provide for that, so that on the top of each floor joist I put a bead of glue and that way uh, it eliminates, or at least eliminates to a certain degree, any squeaking and so on, because later Let's face it, as, as wood ages, it shrinks and moves around a bit, so that helps to prevent that squeaking in the future. So I got here early, before 8 o'clock, because I was expect expecting a shipment of lumber. I wanted to uh, direct the guy as to where to put everything. But uh, it's already here, so those guys are pretty diligent. Trouble is, it's not really where I wanted it, but I guess that's okay. I hope to have this all wrapped up this week. So that's what this video is about, is uh, laying out the walls and framing up the house. So let's get to work. I'm laying out the uh, stud walls now. So I've been measuring, uh, measuring the foundation relative to the floor framing and checking that against my blueprints. And so I've made a determination that uh, I'm gonna, I, I, I snapped a chalk line for this back wall and it normally would be three and a half because that's the width of a stud wall. I brought it to three and a quarter though, just to kind of uh, rationalize the difference in some measurements. For example, the uh, it's not 100% square and perfect. The uh, the floor framing uh, it's square, but the the lumber itself is a little bit out of whack. You can see, for example, how the plate of the two by four sticks out a little bit past proud, you could say, of the rim joist. So. I figured uh, three and a quarter inches, snap my chalk line, so now I'm going to uh, assemble the wall on the floor and erect it. Let's do that. Now I'm putting my uh, top and bottom plate down. I measured them to be the exact length for this wall, which is 20 foot and 9 inches. This is a measurement I got from the trust company. They said the uh, you know, in order for the trusses to land exactly where they need to. So they gave me some real clean measurements, so that's what I'm going by. You can see that it's it does stick past the floor a little bit, a half an inch on each side. So that's what I did. So now I'm just uh, measuring out my 16-inch centers all the way down on this, uh, on the top and bottom plate. Uh, I'll just mark it here on one bottom plate and then I'll
take my little square and uh, transfer that mark across to the top weight. And uh, so I'll do that. And then what I have to do is, is locate my window. I have a window in this wall. So I'll locate where that's going to be because we have to frame that in too at the same time. I've marked out where all my studs go along the top and bottom plate. And here I put a measurement for a stud wall because this is going to be a bathroom and it's going to be five feet wide. I'll probably make it five and a half five foot and a half inches just for some wiggle room but that's at the five foot mark right there and then this part's the bed on our closet so two feet over I marked out another where the stud wall is going to go and that way I could find the center of the actual bedroom so I did that there's the center of the actual bedroom and then I have a window with the rough opening be 79 and a quarter by 57 and a quarter so the width, I, I marked that out on my uh, top and bottom plate, identified that that's where the window opening goes, there and there. So when I frame this up, I won't put any studs where the window is going to go. I'll show you how we do that. I'll put studs on each side and then uh, while it's laying on the floor there, being assembled, I'll put the header in and then frame in the, uh, the actual opening. Junior's working hard here, backfilling. We had Braden here on the weekend moving some dirt around with his backhoe, and I told her not to do that because it gives her tired arms, but anyway, she's being disobedient. So what I have here is on this corner, this is the top of the wall right here, and I have this little step down because, because uh, as you see over here, I've got this concrete post. So I having this is going to be a covered over porch, so I have to carry a beam from that corner over to there, a lamb beam, three pieces of two by ten. So uh, so I have to leave this notch out so I can have something to rest that two by ten on. So I've got this framed and I'll probably put another jack jack here, like a two by four to hold up that. And although it's not really going to be doing anything, these here too are going to be holding up the weight. So I've got it all framed up. And I'm doing my window now, so as you can see, I put my two 2x10 two headers. It's a fairly nice size window, a six foot window, because, uh, well, we've got this nice scenery back here. Maybe we'll take advantage of it. That's what I figured. And uh, so now I've just cut my uh, jack post here. And uh, I'm going to put the jack post in, nail those bad boys in, and then. Uh, then what I'll do is I'll measure up from the floor up to the uh, rough opening, the height opening of the window, and I'll frame this part in, and it will go from there. I've got the window framed in now. My header, I use a 2x10. I like to use 2x10 on all the headers, even if it's just a short span. And that way later on when the house is done, the tops of the windows all they all line up with the same line. I don't get this up and down, which I don't like personally. And uh, also be good, I'll be doing brickwork on the outside and it's nice to have one single height to gauge my brickwork out to so that it works out nice for that carrying lintel afterwards. And so I've got the, uh, the little wall that goes underneath my window. The rest of the stud wall is all framed in. So the next thing I have to do is uh, you see I've got it pretty pretty much lined up on the chalk line. I have to line this wall up perfectly along the chalk line, toenail it in exactly where I want this wall to be. Then I'm going to have to square it up and use wind bracing because I'm not going to be using plywood sheeting or any kind of a like a oriented strand board or anything. I'm using styrofoam type insulation. So I need to use the metal wind bracing. I'll show you how that works in a bit but first of all I got to line this thing up perfectly and square it off so it's exactly square and then put my wind bracing and then I'll be able to put my styrofoam cladding on. So I've got the wall all ready to go. I toenailed the uh, bottom plate right to that chalk line. There's a toenail right there. Uh, where is it? There it is right there. One every couple of feet. And then I, uh, I just put a nail in uh, in the bottom plate, one here and one there, 
and then I measured uh, one corner to the next on the uh, stud wall just to see if I have the same measurement. That way you know it's square. And then I did a, a three, four, five sort of formula. I actually did eight along the bottom, six up here, and then ten across for the hypotenuse. And it's square. It says it's square. So now I'm going to put the wind bracing on. So I got my piece of wind bracing and I just laid it on there on the uh, stud wall. So that'll go on the outside. And so I'll just mark that. Like, uh, I'll just mark this with a pencil all the way down. And then I'll run my steel saw along there at a sh fairly short depth, half inch or so. If you look at the profile of this, it's like a T shape. So this part here will be embedded in the two by four. And then this flange part will be nailed onto the two by fours with uh, two inch nails and that'll make it totally rigid. So that's what I do instead of, that's what you have to do if you're not gonna use plywood or something like that. But right now it's starting to rain out. So I'm, I've got my things covered up and I'm gonna run away. I marked the two by fours with this wind bracing lying upside down on the stud wall. And uh, I'll show you now I ran my skill saw just along those marks that I made. Nice fine cut. So now I'm just pounding the wind brace into that slot. And so it's a nice tight fit. That's kind of key to, to its strength. See that? See, so pound it in real nice. Pound this. And that's just one width of the saw blade. Nice tight fit. Sorry if this is a little loud. Now this can be left hanging over because it's gonna overlap that edge of the plywood floor anyway. Same with up here. I actually have another two by four goes on top of that. You have to double up the top plate. So now I'll nail that on with the uh, two inch nails. So here I'm gonna nail it. Here, here we go. And now I'll, uh, this end I got the window opening, but I'll cut a couple of pieces so that I have some wind bracing in here too, on that other corner. I have my wind bracing all in place. Two nails on each stud, and then over here, because I had a window, I cut my wind brace into two pieces. So I have one coming from this top corner at the correct angle, more or less as if it was a complete wall, and then I put the, the leftover piece like that. So I'm good to go. So now what I'm gonna do is fasten the sheathing on. This is the inch and a half exterior sheathing. Now some people, some folks, they would uh, put the walls all up and then go around afterwards, put the sheathing on. That's probably a, a better way of doing it, but it's really time consuming. You have to use ladders and scaffolding. And, and this way I can put the, uh, the insulation board on easily and then tip the wall up with that already on. The thing is, when I put the insulation board on, it's an eight foot insulation board, but my walls are gonna be more than eight feet, obviously, because I have this rim joist here that I have to cover. So I'm gonna measure that. That should be nine and a half plus one and a half is 11. And then my three quarter inch plywood, so it should be about 11 and three quarter inches. <coughs> that I have to overhang the silver board or the insulation board. I have to overhang it past 11 
three quarter inches so that when I tip it up it will cover that rim joist and nest real nice on top of that block wall. Let's see how that works out. So I have my insulation board lying there exactly where I think I want it to be. It's uh, sticking out past the uh, bottom plate 11 and a half inches. That way it'll completely cover up my rim joist. Now some might say, hey you're making a mistake. You should bring it to the top, flush with that top plate here, and then afterwards it's easy to walk around on ground grade level and patch that, fill that in where the rim joist is. And yeah, you do have a point. You would have a point saying that. However, once my trusses are on, I'm going to want to extend this board right up between the, the, the trusses, the two foot, well you could say 22 and a half inch spacing between the truss. I want to extend that right up into that. So there's going to be a bit of fancy work, some cutting. So I have to go up there and cut all that in anyway along the top of the wall because I want to block that spot off so that when he blows the insulation in later, it won't just go all flying out of the soffit. So that's why I'm going to do it this way. And if you think I'm nuts, that's okay. Uh, it's just the way I decide to do it. So I'm going to nail it on here with these special nails that have a big washer and then I will just sheath this this uh, stud wall in. So I've got the first board nailed on with these these uh, special nails that they ship for it. They've got that nice plastic washer on there. They're pretty flimsy. They bend easy so you got to be careful nailing them in. It's a very delicate kind of material, real thin foil over top of the styrofoam, easily damaged so and you'll notice I'm using a piece of plywood there as I have to reach the further away places I put that down so that I don't damage this board. So now I'll put the rest of this sheathing on. So I got all the sheathing on and then Junior and I tipped this wall up. It was a bit tough. It's about as big a wall as uh, two people would want to do and so I uh, I've got it nice and plumb. I've got the inside bottom plate lined up right along that chalk line perfectly. And then I've got a couple of free braces in here to hold it nice and plumb. So hey, I got my first wall on. This is so exciting, you have no idea. Now I'm gonna put another wall. In fact, I'm gonna put a bunch of walls and then I'll get back to you on that. Junior's been practicing on the Ford 1710, which is great, because I don't really have time to do this. It's really great. She got it figured out. Gradually her scoops are getting bigger and bigger. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty proud. I knew she could do it. There she's waving at us. I'm telling you, if anybody can make a tractor look good, it's her. She's a bit leery about coming real close to the foundation, but uh, as time goes on, she'll get a little bit more careless, like I have been. So it's July the 12th, Monday morning, and I've got most of the house framed up, all the outside walls. Well, except for the garage. I'm going to be doing that probably tomorrow. And uh, a lot of the inside walls are done. I'll just show you a couple of details about that. Here we have the the uh, master bedroom part of the house, master bedroom, bathroom, and ensuite. When we rough in these doors, uh, I want to put a 30 inch door so I have a 32 inch opening. Notice I didn't put any big header up there because it's not supporting anything, it's just for framing in. And, uh, and after I put the stud wall up, then I put the top plate. And you notice how I overlapped the one top plate from one stud wall to the next just to tie it all in together. Show you a bit of that. Did it like that. And then on top of that, I'm going to put a row or a strip of 12 inch wide 6 mil poly so that when I insulate the ceiling, it'll be continuous. So it's July the 12th, Monday morning, and I've got most of the house framed up, all the outside walls. Well, except for the garage. I'm going to be doing that probably tomorrow. And uh, a lot of the inside walls are done. I'll just show you 
a couple of details about that. Here we have the the uh, master bedroom part of the house, master bedroom, bathroom, and ensuite. When we rough in these doors, uh, I want to put a 30 inch door so I have a 32 inch opening. Notice I didn't put any big header up there because it's not supporting anything, it's just for framing in. And, uh, and after I put the stud wall up, then I put the top plate. And you notice how I overlapped the one top plate from one stud wall to the next just to tie it all in together. Show you a bit of that. Did it like that. And then on top of that, I'm going to put a row or a strip of 12 inch wide 6 mil poly so that when I insulate the ceiling, it'll be continuous. On this uh, window here for the ma on the, in the master bedroom, there happens to be a girder truss sitting on right on top of that window opening, so they they spec'd a uh, micro lamb beam. These things are pretty heavy, pretty dense, and uh, so I had to insert that in there for a header. And notice I put a double jack post on that just in case the building inspector thinks that it needs a double jack post instead of a single. You can see I've got all my wind bracing put in nicely and the uh, I installed the insulation board on the floor prior to tipping it up so just waiting for the actually the windows and doors are going to come today so that's pretty exciting just going to finish framing in the uh, walls for this the stairs going down the stairs and I'm also going to put some closet in here and then uh, another little linen closet here, or I should say a broom closet. I've got a linen closet here on this uh, portion. It's kind of hard to see that with just bare studs on there, but it's coming along pretty good. Thanks for watching the video. And uh, next we'll be flying the roof trusses and a uh, pretty complicated job. Hope you uh, can join me for that one. Bye-bye.